Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender tutorial in our Art Asset Pipeline series. This time, we're taking a close look at the concept of LODs, the way they're supposed to be set up in Blender, and the way they function inside CryEngine. But before we get into the setup steps, let's first have a short look at what LODs actually are, for those of you who are new in the game development area. The term LOD, short for Level of Detail, involves decreasing the complexity of a 3D model based on the distance it has from the player's perspective. Factors such as the importance of the asset, the size it has, the speed it's moving at, all influence the level of simplification that can occur on the object without making the transition noticeable. And that's the main factor that an artist would have to focus most on, avoiding any kind of popping. Popping is a term used in the industry to express the change in an asset's quality when the player is moving around the world. Similar to draw distance, a switch in LODs can cause the asset to distract the player due to our eyes being really good at perceiving movement and distortions. Therefore, there are a few sets of unwritten rules when creating LODs for your assets, such as the percentage of the overall vertex count that you can reduce from one LOD to another, the number of LODs needed for the best performance ratio, and the lowest you can go when it comes to the complexity of the highest LOD geometry. Wait. Highest? I, I, thought, I thought you said the lowest you can go. Exactly. LODs are usually counted backwards, starting with LOD0, which is usually referred to as the highest quality version of the asset, and in CryEngine's case, ending with LOD5, which refers to the lowest quality version of the asset. If we're talking about the hierarchy in which you need to set up your LODs, whether you prefer using 3ds Max, Maya, Blender, or any other 3D modeling software, the LOD0 version of your asset is always going to have the name of your asset, the way you want to see it in the asset browser. All the other LODs have to be defined and numbered accordingly. If you're just getting started with CryEngine and you're trying to learn the basics of working with Blender, I recommend watching the proxy tutorial first, in order to understand some of the concepts we'll discuss. Here I have an asset which I've prepared for this tutorial. It already has a proxy, which I've configured according to the previous tutorial in the series, and three LODs, which I've conveniently named so I can rename them later in the right naming structure. Oh, about that. Since there is no official CryTool support for Blender as of now, we have to stick with the workflow of the FBX pipeline, which you might have seen in the previous tutorials. This means that we're going to be using the so-called dollar sign technique for flagging different geometry types to different roles. This isn't mandatory, since you can customize the LOD and proxy properties in the FBX Mesh Importer in CryEngine, but doing this will save you a bit of time when you're setting up your asset, and it'll make sure that it functions properly. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the proxy, except this time, the naming structure of each LOD is as follows. $LOD, followed by the LOD's number, and then an underscore and the name of the asset, underscore boat in this case. I'm going to quickly do this for all three LODs I have in this hierarchy, and then we'll talk about the hierarchy itself. So another important part about setting up your LODs is to parent them to the main geometry. All I need to do is to grab the proxy and every LOD and parent them right underneath the main boat asset. If you're wondering about the material setup, it's pretty much identical to what we've been doing in the previous proxy tutorial. That means I need to use two different materials for each of these parts, one for the proxy and one for the mesh. In this case, I'm using two different materials for the main mesh. One is using the custom UVs in some detailed parts of the boat, and the other one is a tileable material which I've used on all generic flat surfaces. For LOD 1, 2, and 3, I used exactly the same two materials which I've used for the LOD 0 version of the asset. The main boat, so to speak. That's it. No, seriously, that's it. <laughs> all you need to do now is to export the file as an FBX asset, drag it into the FBX mesh importer, set up the collision proxy, and save it where you want it to be saved. Now, to visualize and debug whether the LODs are working or not, I can simply drag my asset into the scene, and as long as I have it selected, you can see that I have this LOD ratio slider here. If I drag this all the way up, I will decrease the distance that I need to have from the object in order to shuffle through all of these LODs quickly, and if I move away from it, you can see that the quality of the geometry is decreasing the further I go. To make this even easier, I can go into the console and type E underscore debug draw tree, and you can see that I will be able to see which LODs we're seeing at the current moment in time. And if I get closer or further away from the object, you can see that this number is changing. And if I adjust the LOD ratio, I'll also change the ratio between these different LODs. And that's all for today's episode on the Art Asset Pipeline. Now you know how to optimize your stuff using Blender. In the next one, we're going to talk about textures, PBR, photorealism, and all that nice stuff, so buckle up. It's gonna be fun. If you have any questions or you need any help, make sure to check out our official Discord channel where you can get in contact with us and our community and get updated on our engine's development and, of course, memes. I'll see you in the next one.